Um, the song that I've written and which I will perform is called Rosie. And it is an attempt to, I've never done this before, it's an attempt to write a, um, a pop song, a, a folk pop type song. I've never done that. I've done weird sort of folk songs derived from traditional idioms, and I've done a whole bunch of actual traditional songs. I've never really done something that, where the, the, the tones and the sounds and the, the way the words come together is more about um, uh, quote unquote pop music or contemporary music as opposed to the, the traditional end of things. And I keep telling people that's my stab at doing a um, something like a Pogue song or a Damien Rice song. I don't even know exactly what a Damien Rice song is. They're brilliant. And it, it came from images that I had in dreams about mm -hmm. Dublin. Okay. And it's just um, a series of images that, that you put together. It doesn't really even quite tell a story, but at the end you've got the impression of a story. That's what I mean by a Damien Rice song. It isn't really, but that, that's, that's, that's my, my definition of it, okay? And after I got all the images and decided upon them, I thought to myself, I've got, you know, I can either base this on a, a piece of traditional music, I almost did, and then I abandoned that and found myself going the other direction into um, um, into a melody that almost doesn't have a structure. You know, taking structure out, implying that dreamlike quality by uh, making the picking patterns and the you know the, the number of measures between verses, etc. You know, malleable, all right? And I pretty much finished it and then realized eh, I don't really, this is just this not happening, never mind. And I, I let it go for probably a week, week and a half, and I'd already announced to John Wright, hi John Wright, um, that I was going to put this on the seat, my next CD. And he's all excited, good, an original, uh, it's, it's in, I don't care if it's good or bad, what, it's on there, it's in there. So I said, okay, well, but it's not working. And then one day, doing the dishes, Another um, memory of being in Dublin, I've only been to Dublin once in my life, and I was there for like two or three days. Um, I had a memory of going to a music store where I purchased a bar on and shopped. I was there like three or four times just to gawk at the instruments, you know, like I said, I got one. And it's, it's called McNeil's, and sometime before um, the Crimean War, the... Um, the bugler who blew the charge of the Light Brigade, I repeat, charge of the Light Brigade, that bugle, that very physical bugle, was purchased at, it was actually made at McNeil's in 1840-something, 50-something, I'm not sure when the Crimean War was. And there's a big plaque there announcing that. Plus it also talks about uh, George Bernard Shaw bought uh, clarinet reeds at McNeil's. This, is, this was maybe, the, among, among all the weird images that I assembled for the song, that was, images and memories of Dublin, that was an image or a memory that meant the most to me, the bugle at Balaclava. And I went, and I just started barking out the chorus. Chorus came in seconds, done. Song, back, on track. So then, it took about a week of futzing and sitting down and recording myself and rewinding and recording myself, trying to figure out. Because then you, now you've got a chorus and you have, to, you have to reassemble the song around it. So that's how it, how it finished up. And I think I managed to retain the dreamlike quality, but, um, but I don't know. You know, I, I played it once in the room uh, at an extremely raucous um, family show, um, lots of step dancing, crazy um, type of a show. The, the room got very, very quiet and attentive. So I think maybe I'm on the right track.